Hey, this is Logan Mize, and you are listening to The Barn. The girl's got her eyes on a fading horizon. Here come the last line of our favorite song. It's the end of an era. She's gonna tear up that interstate on her way to Charleston. She's gone, moving on, taking off my leather jacket. Gonna drive as far as she can tonight. Gonna sleep on the roadside. She'll know when her hometown country station turns to static. She ain't ever been that far from home. Hi, and welcome to The Barn, live from The Barn Studios. Got a special guest online right now. We have Mr. Logan Mize. Logan, how are you? Good. How's it going, man? Doing really good. We are excited. You're going to be in town Saturday, May 20th at the Hawthorne, 8 p.m. Doors are at 7, $25. We're looking forward to having you back to town. Yeah, looking forward to being there, man. Fairly new venue. I'm guessing you probably haven't played there before. No, and we haven't played St. Louis in years. We we worked it quite a bit. We used to play the old Rock House. Um, Gosh, but it's been 2016 or 17, I think, since we've been to St. Louis. So I'm um, excited to get back to town. Absolutely. And we're excited to have you back in town. You have to clear up something for me because my, yeah. my friends think I'm a liar in this. So one of the weirdest, most strange coincidences in my life happened and it revolves around you. I would say probably over 10 years ago, well, I was listening to an iPod. So however long ago that was, me and my wife are driving to Kansas City to actually see the Royals and the Cardinals play. We're St. Louis people, you know. Uh-huh. So I'm listening to the boys from back home on my, I think, iPod. And mm-hmm. as I'm listening to it, it was like the first you know, couple of days that I, I came across it on Pandora or something. I can't even remember how I ran across you. But I'm in love with the song and I'm listening to it. And as I'm listening to it and we're driving down I-70 or across I-70, I see a, like a van and a uh, trailer that has your name and face on it pass us going east as we're going west. <laughs> Told That's that, awesome. I've told that story it's just so random and coincidental. I've told that story a hundred <laughs> times and my friends don't believe me. So did you ever own a trailer with your face on the side of it? Yeah, that would have been 2014 because we I did a I had a, an endorsement deal with the state of Kansas. So I was like, I guess representing Kansas tourism, uh, my home state. So they they uh, wanted me to put like a, a wrapped logo on my trailer and it had my face on there and a name. So, yeah, that would have been either 2000, probably late 2013, all the way through 2014. So there you go. All my friends out there listening that never <laughs> believe me, you because because I haven't seen you. I wouldn't have seen the uh, the trailer anywhere else. So it did happen. I'm not I'm not kidding, fellas. Well, we we frequented I-70 for a 10 years on a, <laughs> right. in a van pretty much every weekend. It was like back and forth to Nashville, to Nebraska, to Kansas, to Colorado. I mean, we were down that road. Uh, twice a week so it was exhausting but yeah I'm, we were i've been through i've driven through st louis i would say gosh i don't know a thousand times in the past 15 years so <laughs> yeah you have a quite a storied career where are we at right now where do you put yourself in in uh in where music is where country music is where do you put yourself in what kind of category or place do you put yourself in uh you know labels are for jars man i don't know <laughs> you know it's <laughs> We don't, we're not really country. We're not, really, it's just, we're like kind of a heartland rock kind of country flared kind of thing. You know, we just do our own thing. And, um, uh, I don't, I try not to worry about what's happening currently. I just, I write what I like to write. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm not in a competition with anybody but myself trying to, trying to do better than I did the time before. So, you know, being 15 years deep, I finally feel like I'm just getting to where like I feel pretty confident singing playing guitar you know i started out and it was really raw at the beginning so uh, yeah i feel like i still feel like it's just getting started you know with um with all like the regional pride ship i guess so you know that you hear about the texas country and nashville and even like appalachia country music or whatever it is do you take pride in being from the midwest and being from kansas because you seem to fly the flag high and proud yeah i mean it's cool uh you know i try not to do it too much i mean look the 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 funny thing is you know being from the midwest being from kansas you know no one wants to see you fail more than than uh you know your own your own folks it's like they don't want you to get too big you know they want to bring you back down to earth real quick if you start having too much success so 
you know, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely proud to be like, you know, small town, Kansas dude. I live in a town of 900 people and, and, um, uh, I did the Nashville thing for 13 years and, you know, did the New York thing. I mean, I've been all over the place, but, um, definitely, uh, love being from rural Midwest. Yeah. And I think that's what draws me to your songs so much as I'm a small town guy too. We're, you know, South of St. Louis, but so many of your sm- songs are about, and even some of your albums are about small town life and very relatable. And again, I think that's why us here at the barn were so drawn to them. And it almost is like a John Mellon camp kind of thing uh, mm-hmm. with the small town life. Uh, you know, with Prairieville, you, you sort of made up this small town, but it was based on some experiences with you and a buddy that you guys had and, and it helped with the songwriting. Can you tell us a little bit about the album? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man, it was uh, <clears throat> it was kind of something my friend Blake and I were working on for a year. He's from Hayes, Kansas, which is actually where I'm at right now. But uh so Blake and I, we wrote on Music Row, you know, staff songwriters at publishing companies for years. And, you know, it's felt like, you know, you get together every day to write a song. And it's like, today, let's write a song about beer. I, You know, it's just, it felt, right. started to feel stupid. And so for just creative purposes, you know, we're both kind of artsy. It's, it's like, dude, let's just make up something to write about. Let's give ourselves a theme. And so we kind of picked a town that was a, a happy blend of, you know, so, something in the rural Midwest, High Plains, you know, kind of thing. And, and we both know those towns and those people, those characters that live there. We know them very well. You know, it's kind of a cut and paste, all these little little towns out here. And so we kind of just based the whole record um, writing about these people and, the and uh, you know, the things that happened in this town, Prairieville. And we probably wrote 50, 60 songs about Prairieville. And uh, at, at the end of it, when we went to cut the record, we, we made it more thematic and less of a less of a concept record because uh, initially it was going to be a, a storyline that you could follow through every song. But I didn't feel like we were picking the best songs at the end of the day. So we turned it into more of a thematic type of, of uh, record. So many of your songs and maybe even some of your biggest hits are based on, I would say, maybe young love heartbreak kind of songs. You know, when yeah. when you are writing stories and you are becoming a storyteller through your songwriting is it easier to pick maybe themes because i know you're a married man a family man is it easier to pick themes that maybe you don't exactly relate to that maybe somebody else would yeah because everybody's been through that you know it's very relatable and that's the thing is like you're writing from experience whether it's something even if it's something experienced 20 years ago you know so you know and those things still resonate with with uh with people and and it's um yeah, it's just, it's easy. Everyone's, everyone's had a heartbreak, you know, everyone's had that, like, oh man, I screwed that up, you know, and then you reminisce about it and, and wonder what if. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know anybody who doesn't have those feelings, but so it's, it makes it a very easy subject to write about, you know. Your newest video, Another Right Now, really grabbed my heart a little bit, you know, because I'm a family man myself. I have three younger daughters and even just like right now, it's their last day of school, you know, so it's summertime, but it's the last time they're in that grade Uh, and having those special moments with them and with my wife and as a family, it's hard to have another right now. And I love the video, you, you and your family. And is that even your dog in the video as well? Yeah. 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 It's one of my dogs. And then, uh, I can't remember what video that had been. It must have been like a little lyric video or teaser. It, but yeah, I think my daughter and, and son are both in there and, and uh, one or two of the dogs. But yeah, that was in the front yard. How do you find that balance between your life as a, as a family man and your career? Uh, it's not bad, really. I mean, yeah, I'm gone like at, for stretches of time. But when I'm home, I'm home. You know, like I don't carry I don't carry a miserable like job around with me you know i love what i do i love writing songs i love recording um i I love i I just i i'm lucky that i uh, was able to to find a little niche something that i've been able to have some success at and and make a living and you know i don't come home stressed from my job you know so it's if i'm home like i'm there 100 percent. you know well another thing that was neat to see was uh your Opry debut and that little uh clip that little film that they made about it saw your family there too and your boy bringing out your guitar that was really cool to see. What was that experience like for you? Uh, surreal, man. I mean you you never think like uh when you first moved to Nashville, you know, like yeah, you dream of getting up there, but man, like it seems insurmountable at times. I mean, the amount of rejection and the amount of failure, you know, you got to go through. I mean, some people Maybe not, but man, it's, it took me 16 years to to stand in that circle and uh, 
you know, I got passed on by every label in town multiple times, some of them more than five, you know? So, um, I've had to go this thing mostly as an independent artist from not even, a, you know, Texas or, you know, any of the regional powerhouse kind of scenes. I've just done it on my own. So to get up there and have my family with me, it, it was huge, man. It was like, I felt like I conquered something. And we're proud to have you representing us. I know we're Missouri and Kansas are not supposed to get along, like especially in Kansas City, because you don't know whether <laughs> it's Kansas or Missouri. Uh, but, man, I, I love what you represent. I love that you're a family man. You put that out there and all the small town stuff. And we can't wait to see you Saturday, May 20th at the Hawthorne in St. Louis. We want to shout out Lucy, the um, manager, I guess, there. $25 to get in. Go to LoganMize.com Logan for all your information and go out and get the new album, Bloodline. And uh, Logan, we'll catch you when you get into town, man. I'm looking forward to it, man. So good talking to you. Thanks for having me on the show. The girl's got her eyes on a fading horizon. Here come the last line of our favorite song. It's the end of an era. She's gonna tear up that interstate on her way to Charleston. She's gone moving on, taking off my leather jacket. Gonna drive as far as she can tonight. Gonna sleep on the roadside. She'll know when our hometown country station turns to static. She ain't ever been that far from home.